Kamala Harris getting caught red-handed, spewing out lies on the economy. The VP used her first solo sit-down to claim Trump ripped jobs away from the American people and left the country with the worst economy since the Great Depression. Kamala was later slapped with this fact-checked from CNN, quote, Harris's claim is false. Trump presided over a gain of 414,000 U.S. manufacturing jobs, not a loss of at least 200,000. Take that, Jessica. But the liberals over on MSNBC are letting her off the hook with this lame excuse. Listen. Um, she answers every single question and gives people exactly what they want. She doesn't. Do you know why? Because she's a politician, and none of them do. They all speak in platitudes. Everybody does it. Where have I heard that before? Um, well, I don't know. Have you heard that before? Um, what happened to democracy dies in darkness? You know, for a decade, that's what we've been hearing from the media. And they would, remember when the New York Times made a really big deal, they were going to talk about Trump's lies. Mm -hmm. And it was going to be okay then to say lies, and they said it all over the place. They never said something along the lines of, well, you know, he's exaggerating. Of course, he's exaggerating. Everybody exaggerates. But a lot of this stuff, especially like when she says the stuff about houses, houses are too expensive to buy. She's like, I alone can fix it. I'm going to fix it, and this is how I'm going to fix it. And the other problem is there's too much red tape. I'm like, but lady, you wrapped the, round, the red tape right. all around the country uh, as part of the Biden-Harris administration. So I feel like the more I listen to all of them, the more I just am going back to being free market principles and all of this, like, tinkering with this, let's do $25,000 here, let's do this, let's, let's forgive this loan, let's not forgive that loan. It's just tinkering that's not going to get us where we need to be. It's an opportunity economy, right, Jessica? What does that mean? It means an economy where everyone has the opportunity <laughs> to succeed. Right. You answered that better than she did. Well, but we don't have that now? Uh, we have it in part, and it's going to get better. And I think, okay, so the way that <laughs> Kamala... Even you laughed. <laughs> so the way that Kamala said it in the debate was factually accurate the way that she said it with Stephanie Rule was not. And I think how she should do it from now on is you say, let's compare the first three years of both administrations. That's clean. It takes COVID out of it because we know that COVID obviously had huge effects on supply chain wiping out uh, jobs. So in the first three years versus the first three years, the Biden-Harris administration added 359,000 more manufacturing jobs than Trump did in his first three years, and 200,000 more auto jobs. Clean and simple, put a bow on it. Those are the stats. Judge Jeanine. Vote for me. <laughs> Judge you Jeanine. know what? I think the only thing that matters is the lady who may or may not be watching us who says, every time I go to the grocery store, I have to make sure I have enough money in my purse because inflation has gone up and wages have not gone up. Because, you know, I'm paying 20, 30 percent more for food and 55 percent more for auto insurance and 28 percent more for energy. And, you know, when Kamala Harris gets up there and her team, like Stephanie Rule, who's a smart woman, uh, says, you know, well, we don't expect her to give us answers because eh, she's a politician. But the woman is running to be the number one. Uh, politician in the world, okay? Mm -hmm. She's going to run the United States economy, the military, everything. And they're good with the fact that, you know, she just can't explain it because she's a politician. How is she supposed to run the country? How is she supposed to change the economy? I mean, you have to admit either one of two things. Either Kamala doesn't know the answer or she's so arrogant that she doesn't think you're deserving of the answer. And, you know, you should just vote for her because of the good vibes that nobody's feeling right now. Greg Gutfeld. Well, I... Here, I thought that she was the change candidate, that she would be different. Turns out she's just like every other politician. <laughs> this is why the empty phrase of change means nothing, because, you know, reporters just love that word change, but they never say whether it's good or bad. Politicians do lie. We know that. They all lie. Some of the lies are directionally true. Some of the lies are in the direction of safety. Some of the lies aren't. For example, Trump. They're killing and raping, okay? Is that an exaggeration? It's not going to kill you. But if a candidate says they're not killing and raping, mm. is that going to kill you? Yes. 
So the direct, it has to do with the direction of the lie. His lie is harmless, especially when it turns out to be prophetic, as it was when he came down the escalator. Um, and Steph some of them are good people. And some of them are good yeah. people. Yeah, some. Stephanie Rule what used percentage? to work. Stephanie Rule used to work at Bloomberg and CNBC, and then she went to MSNBC. It's pretty strange. Uh, I guess they had to burn her reading list, you know, got rid of Milton Friedman and yeah. Thomas Sowell, and they replaced it with emails from Media Matters. Because how do you lose mm. all that background from Bloomberg and, and uh, CNBC and then turn into basically, you know, warming the bench for Rachel Maddow? Mm. Who wants to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.